Senator Pete Harcum, thanks so much for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me, Dan. Anytime. So we've seen the opioid crisis kind of expand during the pandemic. We've seen overdoses increase during that time during lockdown. Prosecutors have said that's because people have been shut in and there's obviously some mental health issues going on during the lockdown. You're chair of the Senate Alcoholism and Substance Abuse Committee. Tell me what you think the state should be doing right now and going forward to curb the opioid crisis as we come out of the COVID-19 lockdown. Sure, and, and we've heard from a lot of the providers um, and community groups about the rise in, in overdose death. Uh, and it is because of the despair, the isolation. Um, you know, recovery requires being with other people. And, and telehealth has worked very well in some cases, but I think the economic despair and, and the isolation are really hurting people. We've seen a spike in suicide. We've seen a spike in overdose deaths. And we had a crisis before we had a pandemic and this has only exacerbated it. So I'm very concerned about the state withholding 20% uh, of reimbursements right now for uh, mental community mental health providers and substance use disorder providers. Um, we also need federal assistance. Nationally, the Behavioral Health Coalition is calling for $38 billion in assistance. You know, we as a country have underfunded behavioral health and community behavioral health services for far too long, and we need federal assistance in order to fill those gaps in the safety net. You know, before the pandemic, there was a conversation a year or two ago about the so-called supervised injection facilities. And I know that mm -hmm. that was a big conversation up in Tompkins County or on Ithaca, obviously in New York City as well. What do you think about those? Because I know that they're really controversial. They would be places where people can use drugs under medical supervision, but also get access to some resources to hopefully help them with their addiction. What do you think about the idea? Should New York allow those facilities? Yeah, I, I think they should. In fact, as part of our opioid task force, we went up to Toronto. We visited one all throughout Canada. They've had no fatalities. Um, and it should be an opt-in. You know, if Ithaca wants to do one, great. If New York City wants to do one, great. Um, I don't think the state should be imposing them on places, but if municipalities want them, it should be an opt-in. And just as you said, they provide other services, access to health care. Have you had an HIV test? Have you had a hepatitis test? Um, are you ready to think about treatment, um, medication-assisted treatment? A whole host of, of options are available to folks, but the key goal is let's keep people alive. We can't get people into treatment if they're dying in isolation. You know, you mentioned uh, the people's finances before, and obviously taxes are a big part of that. In the district that you represent in the Lower Hudson Valley, property taxes are higher than a lot of the state. And that's been true for many years in Westchester County uh, before you took office and on Long Island as well. What do you think the state could be doing moving forward to keep property taxes flat during this time? I know it's such a tough question right now when the state is facing a budget deficit, but in a perfect world, what do you think the state could do to help property tax uh, payers and homeowners? Well, we did make the 2% property tax cap permanent. So that, that helps take the sting. The largest share is of, of local property taxes are education, 60 to 70% of the local tax is, is a local school district. So what we need to be doing is we need to be funding education more through a progressive income tax, more state aid, um, and we've got to fix the foundation aid formula, which is based on, you know, 10, 20 year old census data uh, and doesn't reflect the new trends, whether it's size of student population, whether it's demographics, whether it's uh, English sec uh, as, as a second language, English language learners, whether it's a number of disabled students, all of these things should be factored into the new foundation aid formula um, because the poorest districts don't have a property tax base to support their school districts the way wealthier ones do. When you say progressive income tax, uh, do you mean taxing the rich more or do you mean uh, just kind of a tax reform across the board? No, it would, it would be on, on the wealthiest New Yorkers. Um, it's only right that they pay their fair share and education is where it starts, where equality starts, where opportunity starts. And we need to do a better job of state funding of our schools to take the burden off of overburdened property taxpayers and those districts that don't have the property tax base to support their schools.
So I know Republicans in this year's election, and your race as well, are going to make the state's recent criminal justice changes a big issue of that race. Um, we're talking about the law that largely uh, ended the use of cash bail for low-level and nonviolent offenses. Um, I know Democrats are being asked across the state why they voted for it and if they support a rollback. What's your position on it? Do you think that the state's criminal justice laws should have changed, and do you support the laws as they are right now? They, they had to change because what we were seeing was disproportionate disparate impact on our black and brown communities and our poor communities. And somebody should not be jailed and deprived their freedom when they hadn't been convicted, they're nonviolent, when a wealthy person could get out for, for the very same uh, offense. So it was really unjust, it needed to change, and there's a lot of fear mongering going on right now, pointing to a spike in crime, and that's absolutely false. The New York Post and the New York Times both did studies using New York Police Department's own stats, and they categorically disproved that bail reform had anything to do with the spike in violence in New York City. All right, State Senator Pete Harcum, thanks so much for being here this week. Thank you so much for having me.